Hey everyone, this is Megan with ClubRubyDesigners.com. So glad you could join me today for today's tutorial. We're going to learn how to use the center point function on your Cricut expression. Uh, this is also found on the Cricut Create. And we're going to make some circles cut out on this paper. Now you can just use a standard, regular old uh, paper punch and cut these out. We're going to use them to put these cute little circled embellishments from our collage strip into our bottle caps. So this is going to be really simple to do. You're just going to load in your paper and we're going to find the center by using our directional arrows. The center of this is right next to where this yellow propeller is, pretty darn close. So we're not doing an exact here. It's just to cut out the one inch circle so that they fit right inside of our bottle caps and we get the main idea of what we're going for from these. So we'll just use our directional arrows on the right, find the center here, and we're going to scroll down till we're in the center. Now you're going to want to make sure your center point button is lit, so it'll say center point off, center point on, comes in your LCD screen. Our size wheel is set to one inch because that's what fits perfectly inside. So if you have a one inch circle punch, go ahead and just use that. This is just so you learn how the center point works. We're going to press our circle shape, make sure that comes up in the window. Speed and pressure are at full capacity and we'll just press cut. There's one circle, we'll come down, do our next one, go in the center here, best we can. Hit repeat last, cut that circle. We'll go to the center of our rocket. And I'm just cutting them all up so we can kind of decide which ones we want to use as we go here. That should be pretty good. Repeat last, this button right here, that brings up the last shape that you cut. So you don't have to press the circle every time, just hit repeat last. Cut that. And we're gonna do this bike yet. I'm not gonna leave, I'm gonna leave the other two alone. Now it's going to cut out a little bit more of the circle than we want. Uh, these circles are actually one and a quarter inches. So if you want it to cut out the full circle, you'd set it to one and a quarter. Like I said, we're gonna stick them in our bottle caps though. So unload. Set this aside. Peel them off. These are just fun little shapes then that we can use. We're gonna use make this little scrapbook layout here and we're gonna pop our shapes inside of our bottle caps just like this. So you can kind of pick and choose which ones you want to use. I think we're gonna use those three. So I have the bike still cut out and of course the airplane which wasn't as centered as I thought it was, but that's still really cute. So we still have those three that we can even use on this page or use for something else. I'm just using the three bottle caps though. All right, setting All right. these aside. So we have our bottle caps done. Now I have a whole bunch of strips of paper here and I already have my photos. Well, this one's already completely pre-matted for you. So you can see I used the colored dot paper, the gray, and I layered it and I just layered them up so that you had three layers to have a really nice shadow framing effect. And then I reversed it for this one. Um, so I used the back, the orange of this paper. And then I used that gray again with the spots on the other side. But instead of doing gray orange like I did on this one, I just flip flopped it, easy peasy. And then my photo goes right on top. And this is a four by six photo. So the gray one is cut at four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And then the orange is cut at four and a half by six and a half. So it's a pretty standard measurement. The other one I made a little more custom. This is a uh, three and a quarter inch by three and a quarter inch square photo and then half a quarter of an inch up for each of the layers. So anyway, we'll work. And I'm going to use my glue glider and do a little push forward action here. And we'll put that right in the center, photo in the center just gives it a little bit more of a finished edged look for both of them. Set the photos aside. Now I have a bunch of the strips of paper. If you watched the You Are Awesome card that I created, this is the rest of the paper all cut up here. And then I'm using the other sheet. Here it is, this is the sheet we cut up. I am using the reverse side here. I love this, absolutely love this paper. And uh, I think it has a lot of good colors to it. 
that really just work. And you can kind of decide where and how you want the uh, color splatterings to go. I want the red in the top left corner for my layout and the blue in the top right. And I'm just placing on some of these strips and we're gonna tear these and we're also going to pop them up a little bit and give them just different layers and give them different heights and grunge them, rough them up for some of them. And then others, we're just gonna leave straight edged and clean and right flat down on the paper as they go. So we're just gonna kinda line these up and put our photos on and see how we want it to look. I feel like Benson is very, he's outside playing all by himself and he's really deep in thought with whatever little boys are out there thinking about. He's not really smiling, he's just out there kinda singing to himself and playing and he does that a lot. So I thought it'd be cute to kinda capture this and use these little bottle caps as the embellishment right on top of here. All right, so that's kind of how it's gonna look when we're all said and done. And these strips really act as the anchor to pull your eye across the page and down to the photos and really highlight, highlight them all the way around. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my Chestnut Roan Fluid Chalk ink and I'm gonna ink my edges gives it that completion that we like to see. And I know that this ruler is gonna be straight on. So knowing that, I can ink all edges without cutting or doing anything to it. And yes, I ink all sides. I'm just gonna, I'm out of adhesive in my glue glider. All right, so I'm out of my push-pull cartridge for my glue glider, so I'm just grabbing a different high-tack um, adhesive refill. So this is just a refill for the glue glider pro, pro glone, glue, <laughs> glue glider pro gun. So you just pull the cartridge out and you pop it in with this little thing on top. Uh, this is only a one-way adhesive, so it works the same. You install it the same every time, so it's not a reversible. All right, so that's gonna here perfectly line that up. That's going right down here. Okay, now the rockets, I'm gonna rip these. Just rip, rip one out, set that aside, and ink. Gets rid of that white core, ink those edges. You can use a matching color. There's a lot of red ink splatter on here, so a red would be really cool. A yellow would be awesome, and a blue, um, while I think it would look really neat, I don't know that I would like it as much, just because you'd have to have just the right color blue. So either a bright red, a yellow, or a brown, I think are your best color options when it comes to your ink for this project. All right, and the stars, we're gonna cut this. We're gonna cut it in an angle. I'm gonna place it down and kind of see, I want it to fall a little bit short. So in the center of the star, I think we're just gonna cut across. So it's a little more bannery. And this is very straight. I'm not brushing this on, I'm just dabbing it across the paper. Another way I do this, if you haven't seen before, is just hold, set the place, set the ink pad straight down and then just tab it, tab it right across. All right, one more quick glue glider line. That goes across here. So it's just a little bit shorter. It gives that little step going down. My title can go up here. Straight adhesive on here. Three quick strips is all you need ruffle and rip this one up. So tear the bottom edge if you want. And then I grab a nail file sanding block. You can pick these up really at any store, um, your major department box stores, beauty supply stores, they're everywhere. So you can use these as a distressor and they're 50 cents instead of buying an expensive distressing tool. And you just rub it along the end now this I want to be more distressed, so I may not ink this. We'll see how it looks once it's fully distressed. And that's gonna come straight down, so just grab your adhesive. There is no, eh, 
then we'll do a, let's do a triangular cut into this. Yeah, or a pendant cut. So we're just gonna cut a little triangle, just cut into the center of that circle there. And that cuts your little pendant. So it's not completely even, you can even that out just a little bit. There you go. And that's really cute. And we're gonna pop dot that up. And then add our yellow line. And that's gonna go straight down. I think I'm gonna just cut a small little tiny angle into that. And we're gonna use ink on this one to finish it off. So let's ink adhesive straight on there. Just a little gap in between because we're gonna put the orange piece on top and we're gonna pop that up. All right, where are my pop dots? Okay, so just, oh, those little boogers really can get in your way sometimes. Okay, get those out of the way. Place this on the top edge, bring it down. There it is. And then we want our other photo. We're gonna pop that, that up as well and let that overlap on some of our strips that we brought down. This just ties it all together. Keeps your eye where you want it to be. That's the goal with scrapbooking. Showcase the photos, not always the embellishments. Remember, you're telling your story, nobody else's. So make it your own. And don't worry about whether it looks like it should be in a magazine or not. Make it for you. Okay, there it is. Now let's work on these little embellishes here that we used our Cricut for. All right, I'm gonna remove all the little circles we cut out. And what we're gonna use today, now you can use many different things. You can use glossy accents. You can use the Viva Decor Gloss Gel or glass effect gel that we're going to use. And you can also just use a clear drying adhesive that's for scrapbooking. Maybe something like the Scotch Quick Dry that um, runs complete, that dries completely clear, doesn't have any white dry. Because you're only gonna use a little bit of it to make your own kind of epoxy look for these. The number one thing that I do recommend is using the gloss gel from Viva Decor. It won't warp the paper and it'll keep things in a nice good hold. But Glossy Accents works very well too from Ranger. I'm just gonna do a small little coating on the bottom of each of my three bottle caps. Just a small coating, you don't need a lot. Then you stick in each one of your shapes. Really press it in so that the adhesive, this works like the adhesive and coats the entire bottom of your paper. All right. It doesn't matter if it squirts out over the sides because once you're done, you're going to then take the glossy gel and you're gonna go back over top. Just a small amount, you're gonna move it around. And this is gonna create your own little epoxy looking embellishment inside your bottle cap. And it just has a beautiful finished look. So you just use the tip to move it around and then just sort of tap it on the table a little bit and it'll help kind of even it out, take out any little peaks. And you just want a very thin layer. You don't want to fill up the bottle cap with it. Otherwise it will warp and crack and you'll have kind of a mess. So just a small, small amount covering the hole inside. And tapping it out really does work. It has a leveling agent in it that will help it settle for you and fill in any little bubbles or holes. And the uh, glossy gel really does have a fast dry time. So you're not gonna have to sit around and wait a very, very long time for that to be completely dry to put it in your scrapbook layout, especially if you keep it a really smooth, um, thin coat like I'm telling you to do. Okay, for Benson's uh, journaling, I'm gonna do it along this, this side of the paper and I'm gonna do it that you kind of have to turn the page to read it, but I just think it's going to give it, um, it's going to tell the story that I want to tell on here without being the main focus. Like I said, I want the focus to be on the photos, not on what I'm journaling. So we're just going to grab a black gel pen. I'm going to write in what I want to say about these photos right along here. 
And I do use um, acid-free um, gel pens. Whatever you're working with, you want to make sure that uh, what you're working with is photo safe, acid-free. Something like the BIC market permanent markers are another great option. There's no uh, measurable pH in here, so they're going to be completely photo safe. A lot of uh, things like um, Sharpies are not good to use in your scrapbook layouts because they can bleed and they can actually cause photo damage if you write it too close to the photos and discolor your paper. Well, markers are supposed to discolor the area that you're writing. You want to be able to see it, but you get the point. Um, so make sure that your gel pens and everything that you're working with uh, provide you those options. Okay, so there is my little bit of journaling. Grab our stickers. I'm going to use these for the title. All right, press them down. Now we're going to add our final little bit of embellishments here using our bottle caps. Now once these dry, you could run them through your cuddle bug and flatten them out and kind of crush the uh, corners down just a little bit flatter so it really stays good and tight in your scrapbook. These are not totally dry, so I'm just going to show you where I want to put them. Once they're completely dry, run them through the cuddle bug, flatten them out, then they'll be good and tight for in your scrapbook layouts and for your page protectors so that they're not causing little creases or anything in the rest of your album. All right. There is our layout for today, you guys. I hope you have a fabulous day, and I'll see you again really soon at clubrubydesigners.com. Bye-bye.